Um, so for those of you who don't know me, I feel like I've filled up a decent amount of rows here, so hey guys. Um, my name is Sidel, and I'm gonna be talking a bit about some of the activities that I was involved in during my practicum. So I completed my practicum at Canassist, which is a University of Victoria-based organization that's uh, located just over in Carsa. And um, they're dedicated to supporting people with any barriers to functioning so that they can you know, improve their quality of life or, and also to promote that um, social participation that we uh, spoke about a little uh, yesterday. And they do this by um, creating new and innovative technologies. Um, they have engineers and software developers on their team. And they also create programs and services that address the unmet needs that exist in the community for these people. Um, part of their um, mission is to contribute to a society where all people, regardless of their abilities, have this opportunity to you know, fully participate, to contribute, and to really live up to their full potential. So Teenwork is um, a program that is offered by Canassist, and it's a youth employment program that's quite unique in its delivery. So they offer um, employment support services for youth between the ages of 15 and 19 years old um, who are also attending school. So it's the age and also the fact that they're attending school that makes it unique, um, more, I guess, more unique than other programs. Um, the program achieves this by um, a combination of things, one-on-one uh, -on -one support, group-based learning, um, on-site job support, which is actually quite rare in this field. Um, and they do, they combine these things to uh, improve employability and um, other transferable life skills for these youth. Um, so I just want to highlight that while employment is one piece of this puzzle, um, the main purpose of the program is to support a healthy transition from youth uh, who are attending school through to their adulthood. Um, and while this is you know, a challenging time for any youth, if you guys remember being in high school, being like, what am I gonna do with my life? Um, this is particularly stressful for people with disabilities and their families. Um, it's quite a daunting time. So most of my practicum was spent um, assisting in the evaluation of the teen work program. So Can Assist had hired an external consultant Hey, Michelle, the external consultant, um, who uh, was going to conduct an evaluation using the Developmental Evaluation Framework, or DE. Um, so developmental evaluation is very different than other evaluation, um, as I've come to learn. When I was looking through the literature to be like, how does one practice this? How does one do this thing? Um, a lot of the answers came back as, any way that works. Not super helpful. So what I've come to learn is that it's actually a very context-specific um, set of activities and processes that supports um, program or organizational development on a bigger scale. So um, the primary focus of developmental evaluation, or DE, as I'm going to try to refer to it to you know, not waste so much time, um, is on this adaptable learning, real-time learning, as opposed to um, this accountability to an external authority, as are the cases in traditional evaluation, though accountability is totally like weaved through with the entire process. Um, it's a super flexible approach, which is important for a program like Teamwork that supports people with disabilities. It's an underserved population. They're going to come across complex challenges. They're complex people. Um, and you know the, the programs are ever changing. The circumstances are ever changing for this uh, population. And there's tons of um, different uh, stakeholders involved. And so, and the problem also from, or I guess the, the steps between problem and solution are just not clearly laid out as are the cases with other programs. So one of the key practices associated with this work is identifying you know, where to start, what the entry point is. And so for Michelle and I, we used um, the program logic model, which was um, alluded to in the first uh, presentation today, um, to, be our entry point and also to guide the entirety of our evaluation. So I just put up like a simplified model of, um, or model of a program logic model or PLM um, to kind of just give you an idea of what we were looking at. So part of developing an effective evaluation under this framework is um, for the evaluators is to, um, <laughs> sorry, I made eye contact with Zoe, I gotta stop doing that. Um, the, part of the, um, creating an effective evaluation under this framework is to um, really understand the program and understand the broader context within which the program is situated. So we use the program logic model um, and the program outcomes as uh, a lens for reviewing the program results to date, but we also use the logic model as a uh, backdrop for looking at the literature to ask what actually makes up an effective vocational 
uh, program or an employment program for youth. Um, and this is where my project came in. So um, I conducted a rapid review um, of uh, the literature and my guiding question was what are the essential components um, of vocational training programs for youth with disabilities. So I was trying to get a broad picture of what exactly goes into these programs, what the outcomes are, ooh, okay, uh, and um, the, the things that are best for the youth and what is going to provide the best outcomes, uh, post-school outcomes for youth with disabilities. So um, I just wanna kinda like blow through the process because um, I know it's not super interesting for some people. So I developed a search strategy with the help of um, Carol Gordon, Dr. Carol Gordon at the Public Health Library. I, unlike Elle, needed some help. Um, <laughs> and so the, I developed a search strategy with her and I used keywords to reflect you know, the age of the youth that um, are you know, attending teen work and other vocational programs in Canada and what youth is defined as in Canada. I also needed to focus on the functioning or limitations um, and the program type and then successful post-school outcomes. So I actually um, had quite a strict inclusion criteria for the, um, for the papers that I was gonna hunt down. And so we used um, only data from the last five years for one. Um, just because we wanted the most recent and relevant information. Um, I tried to eliminate the risk of cultural bias, so I tried to focus on like Western countries. Um, I wanted to focus on community-based programs. A lot of programs out there that exist are school-based, and unlike, you know, Teamwork is a community-based organization, sorry, program. Um, I wanted to focus on employment readiness as an outcome or other um, important uh, outcomes that are going to predict employment in the future. And then I tried to incorporate similar components to the teen work program so that um, on-site job support, the one-on-one -on -one, uh, group-based learning, curriculum-based learning. So applying uh, the inclusion criteria, this is necessary. After applying the inclusion criteria, I eventually ended up with 11. One was a systematic review, which I omitted. And the, in no particular order, these are the things that consistently came up as being important as components or approaches in these vocational programs for youth with disabilities. Um, so first and foremost is this term self-determination. So self-determination is uh, a person's ability to act autonomously, you know, without a lot of external influences, act in a self-regulated and then self-realized manner, and then somebody who acts uh, and responds and initiates in a psychologically empowered manner. So essentially what that meant to me was somebody who knows themselves well, like an accurate reflection of oneself, they're able to act and make decisions for themselves based on that reflection of themselves, and then also are, have the ability to ask for help when they need it, and they're able to regulate their you know, emotions and their behaviors. Um, other than self-determination, I'm gonna skip over <laughs> employer factors just because I'm going to talk about it a little later. Um, experiential learning, so, um, <laughs> Aspects like um, job placements, uh, mock interviews, the person-centered approach where individualization was a cornerstone of the features. Um, we can't blanket um, disabilities as I did for my literature review. Um, peer mentoring was another major component. Um, so having somebody considered a near peer, um, somebody with a lot of relatable characteristics as the job coach, uh, which is pretty good for the job coaches and good news for the teen work program considering they're all quite young. Um, positive relationships with those um, mentors um, were, was also connected to more positive outcomes. And then the last two, professional collaboration and familial involvement were kind of um, obvious to me and especially the last one, professional collaboration. There are so many different stakeholders and so many different systems involved that we need to make sure that everybody has a clearly defined role to be able to support these people. And family involvement, if you know whoever their family is, is uh, going to um, have a you know, supportive role or could actually devalue the instructional information that is being provided to these um, these youth in the program. Um, so ultimately, uh, you know, this gave us a really good landscape or an, uh, an idea of what the landscape is for youth with disabilities. So youth with disabilities are uh, disproportionately represented in all unemployment statistics in Canada and across the world. Um, even though there's all these programs that exist, um, they are less than half than likely in comparison to their non-disabled counterparts to actually have jobs. Um, and the, oh, it's just been well documented that um, people who don't have employment are more likely to experience you know, physical and psychological health um, consequences. Um, on a program level, they 
um, we were able to incorporate a lot of the information into uh, considering different outcomes and different uh, components. And as predicted, I, my time is up. I'm just going to end it there because I could talk forever about it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, any questions? <laughs> I thought I had it. <laughs> I, I was speaking so fast. Hi, Fidel. Hey, Al. Hey, thanks for throwing me under the bus there. Mm -hmm. I'd just like to clarify, I would have loved the help of librarians. I just forgot. Didn't sound like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Great presentation. Um, my one question, uh, developmental evaluation. Mm -hmm. um, can you explain a little more? Because... We, like we never learned it in class. Yeah, for sure. So um, developmental evaluation to me seemed like a, um, a really practical way to address you know, the limitations that nonprofits have when, when it comes to like resources and limit um, and like time limitations, right? Mm -hmm. um, they this approach was less of a like authoritarian like person coming in and saying like we're evaluating the outcomes let's see how you did it was more we're going to be like your critical friends i liked that in the literature we're critical friends and you Im immerse yourself into the um the program itself you learn all about the program and then you're facilitating a conversation based on what you've seen so when we initially um you know came to the program gathered all the information from the different assessments that were being used we um, put it all into a spreadsheet, tried to see what kind of patterns and uh, what the outcomes were from all of the like, qualitative data that was gathered. And we plotted it into a logic model, um, kind of beefed up their own logic model, and said, these are possible outcomes, because this is what the youth are saying that they're experiencing. Mm -hmm. um, and these are some of the things that they felt was super beneficial. These are the things that they felt were um, helpful in whatever regard. So we used this to facilitate a conversation and then put it to the job coaches and said, what do you guys think about this? Like, is any of this useful to you? Can you be accountable for this type of outcome? Um, for example, like caregiver um, stress, lowering <laughs> caregiver stress. Can they be accountable for that? Do they want to be accountable for that? And so it was kind of like real-time learning. Okay. So we are going in there, getting that information, and then presenting it to them, and then trying to make the changes, adapting forms to reflect those things, okay. and then testing them out. So it was constant, like, testing, asking the job coaches what they think, asking the manager what he thought, mm -hmm. and going from there. Cool. Does Thanks. that answer? Yeah, it does. Thanks. Hi, Sadal. Hi, Michelle. Can you, um, you skipped over the employer in your list. Can you just talk a little bit about the tension that emerged from the lit review there? Yeah, I can. <laughs> Thank you for asking. <laughs> um, so I really wanted to get to this part in my uh, presentation. And um, we did some research on um, employer perspectives and how these perspectives are influencing um, you know, the employment of youth. If we're trying to beef up the employability of these kids and they have all of these skills, you know, on paper and they're able to demonstrate it, but ultimately the decisions are up to the employers, like we're focusing potentially on the wrong thing, you know, and it, the, they're consistently um, being represented in these unemployment statistics and it has been that way in the last 30 years, so why are we still focusing on the kids? Like we should make some changes. So the tension that arose for me is that um, you know, literature is saying that there are these programs. It is something that is important for the employability of youth, um, but there are no specific, like there's no federal legislation that um, mandates support and funding and, you know, the things that people need to be able to change their employment, I guess, like inclusion and also to force people, mandates better, mandate people to, um, you know, hire youth. Does that make sense? Thanks. Thank you. I think we're going to have to leave it there, but it sounds like there's lots of great topics to discuss over lunch, perhaps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd love to talk about that at lunch. <laughs> Do you want to take this thing back for me?